Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't know where we're going to hit bottom, but I hope we're close. Uh, this hearing is designed to continue an attack on the court because you don't like their rulings. The effort de to delegitimize the Roberts course seems to be unending. Uh, the rhetoric around this has led to a man being arrested outside Judge Justice Kavanaugh's home with guns and uh, ties. A few days ago, there was an effort to stop a man who wanted to kill and torture six members of the court. Senator Schumer famously went to the court and threatened Justice Kavanaugh and Gorsuch before the Dobbs decision. So the American people, I hope you understand what's going on here. My Democratic colleagues <clears throat> want to destroy this court. And if they get in charge of the House, the Senate, and the White House, Virtually all of them has said they will expand the court from 9 to 13 or whatever number they want to pick to dilute the conservative majority that's been formed over decades. Why? Because they want the court to be another extension of their liberal agenda. For decades, Democrats have enjoyed a court that would rule in their favor when they couldn't win at the ballot box, and that's come to an end. So their response is to destroy this court. I promise you it will not go unanswered. The attack on this decision is incredibly, well, I, gotta, I like all my colleagues on, on this side, is just really off base. This is not uncharted territory. The Supreme Court in Nixon versus Fitzgerald said, the former presidents are immune from civil liability for official conduct. Now the question before the court, what status does the president have against criminal prosecutions? All of us, I think to a person, believe that what's going on against President Trump in New York and Georgia and other places is politically motivated legal garbage. That's what we think. We think Jack Smith's efforts are beyond the pale. They talk about insurrection, but he won't be charged with it. They've opened up Pandora's box. There'll be conservative prosecutors in states and counties probably taking up the challenge in the future. And that'll be bad for the presidency. What's going on here in America at this point in time, I think is bad for the presidency. Now, what did the court do? It issued a decision regarding the status of the president, and it said the following. Absolute immunity for actions within his conclusive and pre preclusive constitutional authority, such as pardons. When the Constitution confers an authority on the president specifically, they have absolute immunity. If that weren't the case, it would be chaos. Could you pardon, could you prosecute a president for a pardon that you didn't like? No, because that's the authority granted to the president by the Constitution. The Constitution makes the president the commander in chief. Presumptive immunity for other official acts. Now these are official acts not specifically granted by the authorities granted by the Constitution. The Blassing Game versus Trump case, uh, two liberal judges and one conservative judges talked about this. Official acts extend to the outer perimeter of the president's official responsibility. It covers actions so long as they're not manifestly or palpably beyond his authority. Basically, the court adopted that reasoning. And the third is there's no immunity for unofficial acts. Now, that to me is a logical approach to how you would handle presidential immunity regarding criminal prosecution. When the Constitution gives the authority to the president specifically, they have absolute immunity. When they're acting officially, and that has to be a factual determination, I would suppose, there's a presumption that can be wiped away. And there's no immunity for unofficial acts. That to me seems to be a reasoned approach 
to a problem. Before the court ruled, <clears throat> it was established that back in the 80s, civil liability protections for the office of the president. Now we have before us issue of criminal liability of the president. All you want is an outcome. You could care less about the law. I've seen this firsthand in this committee with Kavanaugh. You just wanted to tear him down and keep that slide open. That's the, the problem with liberalism from my point of view, is that you just want an outcome. If you can't get what you want, then the people who said no must be bad for the country, they must be you know, bad people. You want the court to get you outcomes. You really don't care how they get there. And that's dangerous. And we're gonna fight you on this. And we're gonna win the majority. And we'll have hearings about a lot of things you won't talk about. And we'll do some good work together. We've worked on protecting children from online predators and we'll continue all that. But if we get in charge of this place, I promise you this attack on the court is gonna stop. It will be over. <clears throat> you will have lost the ability to try to take an independent branch of government and degrade it because you don't like the outcomes. Justice Roberts is probably the smartest person I've ever met in my life. I think he's motivated by an allegiance to the law. He has a conservative bent, that's for darn sure, but that's okay, it's okay to have a liberal bent, as long as you're faithful to the law. I think he is. Matter of fact, I think he's one of the most decent people to have ever held the office of Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. At his very core, he's a decent man. And what are you accusing him of? Basically, creating a monarchy in our country. It's shame. That's, that's just shameful. Sotomayor and Kagan, I voted for both. I thought they were qualified. I think their dissents here are beyond the pale. Just out there, kind of wacko stuff. Politically motivated dissents, but I respect them both. I just don't agree with them here. So the bottom line is, this hearing is not about righting a wrong. This hearing is about a continued narrative of delegitimizing a court you don't like. So we'll see how this holds up over time. Thank you, Senator.